Yeah, and good. It's like, wow, I know I know my guitar was shining, all the people up here. Sorry about that. I saw him like try, try not to blind him with the power of the Spirit of God there. What a blessing. Uh, you know, just want to remind you guys, you know, get that time off, whatever. Mike McIntosh coming up, you know, uh, one of the, the, the founding dudes with Calvary Chapel, and what a sweet time that will be. He's a sweet man of the Lord, loves Jesus. I uh, want to remind you of that. And just, you know, with the prayer chain, it's not in the old days. Remember in the old days, you'd get a call, and then you had to call the next person on the list, and then if they weren't home, you'd call the next. You know what? Just get on the prayer chain. It's as literal as you're going to receive emails on who to pray for. Or if you need a prayer request, you literally send it in. And man, what a blessing to know who to be praying for and have people praying for you. Amen? Dude, I tell you, I'll receive. I'll, I'll, the one thing I'll ever always ask for from everyone here is prayer as your pastor, so I don't mind doing that at all. Let's open our Bibles this morning to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, as we're continuing verse by verse through the book of Colossians. What a great adventure this has been. Hey, just so you know, too, on uh, Wednesday nights, we're in the book of Revelation chapter by chapter, and, you know, just been really good stuff, and we're, we're starting in chapter 4, uh, you know, this coming Wednesday, if the Lord tarries. Amen? Amen. Never know. Coming up. All right, so chapter 3, we're going to be looking at verses 5 through 11 this morning. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. And let's read those, and then we'll pray. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked, then you were living in them. But now you must put off all these these, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here is, excuse me, here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you, Father. For this intimate time with you, Jesus, with, as, as you, we study your word this morning, Lord. Again, have your way with us, Lord, as we choose the better portion to sit at your feet and to hear from you here, Lord. As the sun shines, Lord, let your spirit rule and reign in our lives this morning, Father. Soften our hearts, each one of us here, to hear afresh and anew from your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as we go here, Paul is, is where he's almost transitioning again here in verse 5 and basically going from theology to practical application in our lives as Christians. Have you ever been sitting under somebody's teaching? Maybe it's me sometimes, and, and you don't quite get what they're talking about, and at the end you kind of walk away and you're just like, wow, what was that all about? You know, it was kind of cool. I heard some neat stuff. I heard some spiritual stuff, but I, you know, I, I don't understand well, what to, where to take this. In, in, in Bible teaching, especially with the way we do it at Calvary Chapel, we do what's called inductive Bible study. And basically it means you observe, you interpret, and you apply. You observe what you see in the text, you interpret what does it mean to us today, and then how do I apply it to my lives? Very much like the Apostle Paul is doing here within our letter. He has given a whole bunch of theology. He's been given warnings. He's been telling us, you know, basically since we've died with Christ, he said, since you've been raised with Christ, he said, since we embrace not the shadow, you know, of the coming, you know, through, through uh, religiosity and legalism, but we, we embrace the substance that is Christ. Since our lives are now hidden in Christ, he's now going on to give us application on how to be as a Christian, how to live as a Christian, how to walk as a Christian. Now, it is quite important for us, by the way, to have a good, proper, and biblical theology. Amen? We need to understand the teachings of the Holy Spirit of God, the Trinity of God, the the, the virgin birth, and all the things that we hold on to as the, the Christian church that actually make us Christian through the teachings of God's Word. But you can also have all the theology in the world. We can memorize the Bible all we want. 
But unless it works out practically in our lives to loving God and loving others as ourselves, it's worthless. Amen? Hey, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, man, we can do all these things, give away all the stuff we have to the poor. We could go live amongst the poor for the rest of our lives, and the world would say, wow, what a godly person Bill is. But if I don't, if I don't do it with love, it's nothing. I can give my body to be burned. But if I have not love, it's nothing. So even as we come now, we need to understand that, that God is now, through the Apostle Paul, giving us some application. Look at verse 5. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Wow. Wow. If this is not describing the culture with which we are living in today, I don't know what does. He, he, let's, let's know something here first. The, first of all, we're to put these things to death. Therefore, we're to put these things to death. What is earthly within you? I like how the Amplified Version reads. It says, So kill, deaden, deprive of power the evil desire lurking in your members, those animal impulses and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin. You know, I find it very interesting. Notice that it is us who are commanded to put these things to death. Do you see that? We're to put those things to death. God commands us here that we are to put these to death. So thus, by the power of the, of the Holy Spirit of God, we are to be obedient to him. We are to be active in our lives as Christians. Too many of us today, especially, well, I'll say throughout the entire church, we've become what's called a passive Christian. Well, put to death what's, you know, these things within my earthly members, you know, therefore, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm going to come before you now and you put it to death in me. Here, come, Lord, put it to death. Come, Lord, humble me. Notice how we're singing, what does it say? It's not humble me, Lord, it's humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. We are to put to death those things that are earthly within us. You see, beloved in Christ, we are not to have a passive Christianity, but an active Christianity that is active in response to the Holy Spirit of God through his word. Amen? We need to be those that hear these words and say, Okay, Lord, you're telling me that I need to put to death, therefore, that what is earthly within me, and I need to obey you. Can I hear an amen? Amen? Amen. amen. We need to not just sit back and say, Okay, Holy Spirit, you do everything. Hey, I remember years ago, I've shared this before, but I remember sitting at a traffic light, and I can still remember the, the, the cross, the, the Heil and Magnolia. And, and you know what it was? It was like, I was saying, Lord, teach me humility. Well, what happened? Man, the doors, you know, it seemed like the doors of hell opened against Bill. You know, all of a sudden, all these things came at me. And you know what? I never prayed for humility again. No, I, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you see, because I have to choose to be humble. God allows these things to, then he allowed all these things to come into my life, and I have to choose to be humble. Right now, you and I this morning have a choice to make. Am I going to obey what we're told here, that I can put to death that which is earthly within me, or am I not? Am I going to go to bed tonight and say, Lord, just please kill everything earthly within me. All right, good night, and I go to bed. And wake up in the morning, Lord, it's not dead. You didn't do your job. I guess I'm just going to go keep being earthly. Now, if we were honest, most of us here would say amen because that's what we do. It's not my fault, Lord. You didn't, you know, you didn't give me enough of your Holy Spirit. No, no, no. It is our fault because what God commands us to do, he's going to enable us to do. Amen? When God tells us to do something, this is what I love about our Lord. He's already given us his Holy Spirit to be able to go, you know what, Lord? Again, if we believe his word, by the way, amen? If I believe his word, then I am to hear his word and when he commands. Notice again, this isn't a suggestion. You know, if you're up to it today, Dan, and you're feeling strong enough, and you're having a good enough day, I want you to put it, but if you're not, it's okay. Isn't that how most of us live, though? Lord, I know I'm all under grace, and I'm under your love, Lord Jesus, so just, I'm just going to go, I am having a hard day, Lord. But you know who is whispering that to you? It's not the Lord. It's the enemy of our souls. Because we see here clearly the command from Jesus. 
Put to death, therefore, that which is earthly within you. And then he goes on to, he doesn't, by the way, notice, he doesn't give us a choice either on what to put to death. Well, Lord, I'm going to put to death these other things. No, what are we to put death to, to death? Notice this, this, excuse me, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness. You notice first it's sexual immorality. It's been translated sexual promiscuity. It's porneain in the Greek, and it literally means, you know, any kind of immoral sexual relation. Immoral according to who, by the way? God. And where do we find out where that is? In the Word. Amen. I can actually just look in the mirror, and I got it all down. I know. I know it's immoral. I know it's not. And you ever notice that the things that, you know, are immoral are the things that we don't do. You know, it's funny, you know, today the, the big hot button within our culture is homosexuality. And in a way it should be as far as within the church because we're being assailed, literally assailed and assaulted and attacked by the homosexual movement today. Uh, the lady just down and her husband down in Oregon area, Port, I think it was outside of Portland, you know, she just, what they get fined? $200,000 you know, for not wanting to serve a gay wedding because it goes against their moral beliefs. And most of us, if, hey, want to go see a movie? Yeah, let's go see a movie. Let's go see Brokeback Mountain. Most of us would say, no, why? Because it has homosexuality. It's just pushing the forth this sin. But how about if most of us said, hey, let's go see The Notebook? Don't say yes, please. <laughs> I want to go see The Notebook. And a lot of you are sitting there, I love The Notebook. I made me cry. It's just so beautiful. But wait a minute. If you go, you won't go see Brokeback Mountain. Why won't we go see a movie about fornication? Do you know that like 30, 40 years ago, those kind of movies, you wouldn't go see that, and there wouldn't be the fornication. Why do you think you know Lucy and and, and uh, Ricky slept in separate beds on TV? They were married. Even it was called morality. It was called trying to have some sense of morality. And today, it's become so propagated that we'll sit there and, and totally have no problem watching a show or a movie or singing a song about fornication. Oh, but no, don't, not homosexuality. And we don't even see our own hypocrisy. Yeah, and again, remember, as I'm going like this, and Pastor Romain taught me, I have three fingers pointing back at me. We need to be careful. We need to put to death those things in our own lives that are sexual immorality, impurity, or, or uncleanness. Passion means lust or inordinate affection, evil desires. And within our culture, that's exactly what they're going after. Dude, you can't watch a commercial anymore. You want a hamburger? Oh, let's go show this girl washing a car, you know, bent over, you know, with the bathing. It's like, really? For a hamburger? If she really ate hamburgers like that, she ain't going to be looking like that for long. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Same thing when you see the beer commercials. You see them drinking beer. Ho, oh, oh, ho, it's always some svelte guy and all this good looking. And then you go to, and we, you know, we know people who are drunks and alcoholics. What are they? You know, and they're drunk and they're big and they're red nosed. And, and it's just like it's sad. We glorify sexuality. They use, next time you're watching TV, even if it's something good, maybe it's some just, you know, construction show. But watch the commercials and how many of them have either subtle or outright sexual things, even about socks or hairspray or dumb stuff. It comes at us from all points, and we need to be careful. We need to put that stuff to death. You know, I remember I was 10 years old, and me and my friend Dave Meyer, we were adventurers, amen? Me and my little brother Bob, too, he was eight. We were adventurers. We go out into the fields, and you're, you're, you feel like you're in Africa, right, or in the Old West. And, you know, this was back in the late 60s, early 70s for me. But we were out in this one field one time, and, and we found a fort that these other, you could tell older kids had built. It actually was built of wood. And had, you know, a, a, a door and a roof. and So we, we broke in, of course, being the kids that we were. And we got inside this older kid's fort. And you know what we saw? There was pornographic images pasted up on the walls. I'd never seen pornography before. And I still remember the first, I can still see the very first one that I ever saw. Isn't that sick? Isn't that sad? And you know what, though, beloved in Christ? 
It is all around us. The numbers would astound you of even how many people here within this church have problems with pornography, with lust. And again, it's not just pornography as, as in movies or pictures. It could be a pornography that's in a novel. Oh, I love the Harlequin romances. Dude, be careful. You know, because what is it? And Biff came out of the water in the pool with his, the water glistening off his muscleized chest. And then you look over at your husband like, oh, man, look at that guy over there. And that's what it does. That's what this is talking about. It's impurity. It's a passion for someone else besides your husband, besides your wife. And if we think that we can do this, and, and to be honest, most of the people who have problems with sexual immorality, they hide it. It's in that computer. It's on that phone. It's, it's over here or whatever, and they think nobody knows. You know what? Your whole family is affected, whether you're a child, whether you're an adult, whether you're a husband or a wife. And, and sadly, I have to say wives now because it's even women are getting more and more into the pornography and things like that. What's the number one movie in the United States right now? A pornographic movie. Rated R. It should be probably rated X. I don't know. I won't see it. I, I won't even talk about it. But that shows you where our country is. Millions of people have gone to see this movie. And it's disgusting. Man, I've even heard people stand up, you know, on Facebook or Twitter and say things against the movie, people that are professing Christians, and other people that profess Christianity. Well, that's very judgmental of you. Yeah, you know what? It's called good judgment. It's called godly judgment. It's called judgment according to the word of God. Hello? It's very clear throughout the Bible that we are not to be sexual, immoral, or impure, or passionate in, and in a lusting way outside of our marriage, or to have evil desires like that. You know, as Paul told Timothy, flee youthful lust. I remember talking, I, this was like when I was, I don't know, in my early 20s, and I talked to this really old guy, he's probably my age, you know, this, he's probably 52, <laughs> He's like really ancient to me. No, I think it was actually in his 80s. But, and I said, so, man, it must be great at your age not having to struggle with sexual temptation anymore, huh? What, what age does that happen, by the way? So I can kind of look forward to that. He goes, he looked at me, he goes, it never happens. Because remember, when you ever talk to somebody who's older, even like me or somebody, what do we, dude, I feel like I'm 18 still inside. I remember my dad, even at 78, would say, I'd look in the mirror. It's like, who is that guy looking back at me? We need to be careful no matter what age we are. And we need to take practical steps. Now, notice as he says, put to death, therefore. So what do we need to do? Just go out and kill ourselves, you know? Or how about, you know, I don't know if you know this, but back in ancient church times, there were guys that would actually cut off certain portions of their body so that they wouldn't lust anymore. Other guys, even within the church, blinded themselves so they wouldn't look lustfully upon a woman anymore. And you know what they wrote about this? Guess what? We still, I still lusted. Because that's not what the Lord is talking about. Even when Jesus said, if your hand sins against you, cut it off. If your eye sins against you, gouge it out. He wasn't meaning literally, let's go gouge it out. <laughs> oh, Bill, your eye must have been looking bad, huh? Yeah, I was looking after a woman, Leslie, so I just cut, plopped, plucked it out. Good for you. Praise the Lord. No. Guess what? I still have one other eye. I still have another hand. What, what it's talking about here is we are to be those who are crucifying the old. We are to put it to death. We are to literally understand that the Holy Spirit of God is now living within us. Alexander McLaren said, It is far easier to cut off the hand, which is not off all of me at all, than to sacrifice passions and desires. Though they are the worst of self, they are myself. Too many of us hold those passions and desires in a little box within our heart, and guess what? They don't stay there, do they? They grow, and they grow, and they grow. I remember Pastor Chuck Smith sharing a story years ago that really, it spoke to me. He's like, I was, in a, I was at a pastor's conference, and after the pastor's conference, I was in the hotel room, and I'm flipping by the channels to find some sports show, and, and I flipped past this one thing, and I thought I saw a naked woman. And I passed by it, and inside of me, he said, my, my brain said, oh, was that a naked woman? You better go back and check that out, Pastor Chuck, just to see if it was. And not look at it. <laughs> he said, no, I'm not going there. And he turned the TV off, unplugged the thing, and took out his Bible. 
You see, we need to be taking practical steps. You know what? If you have a problem with pornography, get rid of what the problem's coming from. Hey, I want to send you an email, Joe. I don't have a computer anymore because, you know what, I was just having too many problems with it. I took it outside like Kirk Cameron did in that one movie. And I, and I just, I, I, I lifted it up to the Lord and I smashed it. I can't survive in this world without a computer. Yes, you can. Buy software that blocks it or that holds you accountable. You know, if you like to watch movies, buy, there's a thing called ClearPlay. You can buy this, this thing that's called ClearPlay, and it'll actually cut out all the language, cut out all the scenes of, either, you know, of sex and, and, and violence and all this different thing. Basically, guard your eyes, guard your minds, guard your ears. We need to be those that are putting these to death ourselves. Proverbs 6.27 says, Can a man carry fire next to his chest and his clothes not get burned? It's saying, look, you can't walk around with this, you know, sexual thing, this passionate thing to where you're, you know, where we're, you know, having these impure thoughts, these passions, these evil desires, that, that, and it's not going to come out some way. We need to take that stuff and put it to death at the cross of Jesus Christ. And if you're sitting here and you're a child of God and you think that you do not have the power to overcome that sin, let me just tell you this, you're being lied to. You have been lied to and you're believing lies. I don't care if you've believed the lies for 50 years or for five days. We have the power through Jesus Christ to overcome sin. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen. That's what Christianity is. We've been set free. The enemy keeps telling you, you're not free. You're not free. And we just say, you know what? The Lord told me to put this to death and I believe his word. I am free in Jesus Christ. I'm going to be like Job in 30, Job 31.1. I have made a covenant in my eyes, with my eyes, not to look lustfully upon a young woman. Guys, make that covenant. Gals, make that covenant. Now, interesting, notice though how he says this stuff. Passion, impurity, evil desires, but notice he throws in covetousness, which is idolatry. Doesn't that seem kind of weird? You know, I liked how one author said it. Let me, let me read what he said. He said, many middle-aged men who were once devoted to sensuality and, excuse me, and um, they are now equally given to the love of money. Their sins have the same source. It's all about self and self-gratification. Whatever I put my trust in, he went on to say, I worship. Materialism is the true religion of thousands of professing Christians today. You hear that? Materialism is the true, um, pro, uh, true religion of thousands of professing Christians today. So often the successful, uh, covetous person we honor. As the saying goes, if a man is drunk with wine, we kick him out of the church. But if he is drunk with money, let's make him an elder. <laughs> I think most of us have been in churches like that. Now notice in verse 6, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked uh, when you were living in them. Now, just a brief thing on verse 6. There are those within the church today, a lot of within the Reformed movement, that are preaching that there is not going to be any wrath of God. I actually read a young fellow that was and by young fellow, I think he's around 40 years old now, but um, he was saying something to the effect that the Old Testament, even when the writers were writing it, they were thinking of a wooden God. They were, they were, they were writing of God who they did not understand, they did not know. And basically, that even when they wrote about when God did certain things, that they were taking it out of context. Basically, that a God of wrath, a God who is going to pour out his wrath, does not jive with these people. It does not jive with what they see in the New Testament in Jesus. They focus on the four Gospels, yet they ignore so much even within the four Gospels. And even here we see, look at this in verse 6, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. The Bible calls it the Great Tribulation. And you know what's interesting? If we believe this, everybody here believe that Sodom and Gomorrah actually happened? Does everybody believe that? Then why do we think that we're going to be any different as a country? Dude, I've heard it said that if, if God doesn't judge America, he's going to owe Sodom and Gomorrah a great apology. 
It's so funny. You know, we hear there's so much talk about why do the terrorists hate us? Why do the, 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 you know, the fanatical Muslims hate us? Well, do you know that there's one reason that they actually have that's a good reason to hate us? Do you know what we're number one in the world in, in exporting of? Pornography. Pornography. Now imagine you have a, a, a country that's based, it's even on false religion, but you see this pornography coming from what country? America, America, America. What are you going to start calling it? The great Satan. What are we called? That's one of the reasons. Obviously, there, there's prophetical things going on and this and that. But there is coming a time when God is going to pour out his wrath upon unbelieving man to drive them back to the cross of Jesus Christ. But we also need to understand that it is on the account of all these evil things that the wrath of God is coming. Notice in verse 7, in these two you once walked when you were living in them. You know, there are so many today, even within the church, that are saying just the opposite. They're saying, don't put to death what is earthly within you. They say what? Embrace it. Embrace who you are. Amen? We hear it all the time. You don't have to worry about having sex outside of marriage. You don't need to worry about living together, you know, even committing, you know, adultery. It's not really, it's having an affair. It's not that big a deal. Homosexuality, it's okay, man. You're all create, you're all, that, that's who you are. The saddest thing in the world is when someone will come up and they'll say, you know what? I'm a drunk. I'm a Christian, but I'm a drunk. Or, you know what? Hey, I'm a drug addict. But I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm a drug addict. You know what? I'm a homosexual. And I'm a Christian. I'm this. And it's like I look at them and say, dude, you are no longer any of those things. You are a new creation in Christ. Amen? Amen? We need to understand that. If you used to be an alcoholic, the world calls it, or a drunk, you're now a healed alcoholic or drunk. If you used to practice homosexuality, you're now a healed homosexual in Christ. If you used to be a drug addict, you're now healed in Jesus Christ. Hey, that doesn't mean temptations won't still come knocking at your door. And temptations will come to us in all different ways. But we're, we're, as we're carried off, James tells us, by our own lust. See, we don't need to embrace the old man. Notice it says in verse 7, they're in these two, you once walked. It doesn't say you continue to walk in them. It doesn't say it's all right to continue to walk in them. What are we supposed to do? We're already told they're what? Put them to death. Put those things to death within us. You once walked. I like how Peter says it in 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's turn there, please. 1 Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 9. First Peter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which war against your soul. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen. We are told over and over and over within our culture, they're teaching it in our sc schools. That it's okay to have these deviant sexual desires. It's, it's who you are. Fulfill them. It's the animal in you. It, and that's basically what they're teaching us. They, they're teaching evolution personified. And we need to get out of that thought process and bring it back to the word of God. We are a royal priesthood. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Is a royal priest going to go out and practice all these, sin, these sins? No. Or not. Hey, we might fall here and there. Can I have an amen to that? And when you do fall, just remember this. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I was talking to somebody just the other day. Hey, you know, I'm having a real hard time with one thing in my walk, and that's the condemnation that keeps coming. You know what? There is no condemnation from the Lord. You know why? Because the wrath of God has been poured out upon Jesus Christ upon the cross. Amen? The wrath that was meant for us, the condemnation that was meant for us is poured out upon Jesus. 
If it's the Holy Spirit in our lives, he will convict us. He will not condemn us. Amen? Conviction is different than condemnation. A conviction, the Lord is chastising those whom he loves. And he loves you so much, he might allow these things to bring you back to him. To get away from those things that you once walked in. And you know what? I believe the Bible. Do you? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? Do we live that? I think so many people today, you know, we're, we're just consumed by all these things in our past and, and the enemy, you can't do this, you can't, there's condemnation. And just break free. It's all covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. When the enemy comes and says, you're a buzzard, you sneak, you're terrible, you're a sinner, look at him and say, you're right. I am a buzzard, I am a sinner. But I'm saved and I'm covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been forgiven, I've repented of my sins. Now remember, that doesn't mean we won't fall sometimes, but we're not going to practice it anymore. We're not going to get, you know, caught up into it anymore like we did before we were believers in Jesus Christ. Look at verse 8. Here's another command. But now you must put off all of these. And just glance up to verse 10, or verse 9 again. It says, seeing to this, you know, that you have put off the old. And look at verse 10. And you have put on the new. This is basically the put-offs and the put-ons. We're to put to death those things, and, and, and we're also to put things off of us. We're no longer to practice it. Jesus said it like this, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. Amen? Amen. The Bible also talks about to where we're to crucify ourselves in Christ Jesus. And this is another way of saying it. We're to put to death those old things. And notice verse 8, we're to put them off. Anybody change their clothes for church today when you came? Put on new clothes? I hope so. <laughs> I'll be praying for whoever's sitting next to you at lunch today. I did, so I smell pretty good. You know, everything. My wife takes great, wonderful care of me, and I'm so blessed because I'm colorblind. I couldn't put two things together. But imagine if we put the same clothes on over and over and over. What happens? I, mean, I remember when I was single. You know how you do that when you're single, guys? You know, you take your socks, turn them inside out, and wear them to work again, and your T-shirt, same thing. And, or you pick it up. It smells good. I'm, it's, it's all good. The single guys know, most of you guys know exactly when you were single. You remember those. But you, you know what? It, we put those off. We put them in the, in, the, in, the, in the laundry basket. We put them in the washer. We put them in the dryer because they need to be cleaned. You see, beloved in Christ Jesus, even when he said, you know, to, to, to pick up our, to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. Notice one thing he said, it was daily. It didn't say just the one time when you believed in me. It didn't say just that one. No, we, and we daily, beloved in Christ, need to put to death these things in our lives. And we also need to put them off. Amen? Because I'll tell you what, when we're sleeping, those things like to kind of magnetize back to us, almost like a, you know, a sock that's clingy after you get it out of the, the laundry. You know, it's like clinging on there. And these things like to come back. Notice what it says here. But put off all of these anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Now, how many of us in here put, make excuses for our anger? Yeah. Most people don't want to raise their hands. I don't get angry. <laughs> I know you guys are all holy and I'm not, but hey, that's all right. We need to be honest with ourselves, amen? We can get angry. But do we sin in that anger? This anger here is not a righteous anger. There is a righteous anger. This is not righteous. This is an anger that, notice, it is wrathful. It is, has malice and slander and obscene talk from your mouth. These are to be put off. Notice again, they're not done by, this isn't done by the Holy Spirit. There are fruits of the Holy Spirit that just produce in our lives. But there are things that God has given us, tasks that he's given us to do. And this is, these are some of them that we're to do. We're to put to death, but we're also to put off certain things. And we're going to come in a moment to things that we put on. But we need to be those that are putting off anger and wrath, malice. Well, I'm sorry, I can't help it. It's the Irish in me. Come on. You know what's funny about that? It, do you ever hear anybody say, that, what, what country doesn't they say? Well, it's the Italian in me. It's the Greek in me. It's the German in me. You know why? Because we're all human beings. 
And we all can have wrath or anger. But you know what, beloved in Christ? It's sin. And we cannot accept it in our lives. If there's anybody out there that's being abused by a husband especially, sometimes I've heard it from a wife. Get out of the marriage. Remain married, but get out of the home. Be safe. But don't say, well, I'm a Christian, and you will submit to me, woman, and when you get home, you're getting a beating like you've never gotten. And that's going to happen today in Clark County with women from some churches that I know for a fact. And it might even be happening here. I'll tell you what, women, or guys, but mostly women, if, if your husband's beating you, get out of the house. Have him come talk to me. I'm not that tough, but have him try doing what he does to you to me. See if he's got the stuff to do that. That makes me angry because they do it in the name of Jesus. And right here we see that this is not something that we can excuse. Well, I'm not an adulterer. I'm not this and that. But man, I come home and I'm just mad from work. Well, knock it off. Nail it to the cross of Christ. Put it to death. Take it off. Well, I can't do it. Then you're not a Christian. Can we embrace that fact? I've been having anger issues for my whole life. Have you had it for your new life in Christ? Because you shouldn't. We need to be careful what we believe and what we think are okay. Anger, wrath, malice. You know, we need to be those, you know, you know that are putting these things off. Not, not putting them on. Notice here, anger means a bad temper, wrath, rage, or irritability. Malice, bad feelings towards other, meanness. Anybody have bad feelings toward, don't raise your hands, bad feelings towards others? Confess it before the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let it fester. But you don't know what they've done to me, Pastor Bill. I don't. But I know what the Bible says for us to do. Confess your sins. We will be forgiven as we forgive, Jesus said. A bad temper, wrath, irritability, rage. You know what's weird? You know what's sad, by the way? Do you ever notice how when we're at work, we'll be all proper and prim? And then we come home and we'll treat our wives and our husbands or our husbands and, and kids worse than we do anybody else? Why? Dude, they're the ones we love the most. Go out and be mean out there if you're going to do it. We shouldn't do it at all because notice here, you must put, these, put off all of these. Notice it doesn't say put off some of these. Well, I have put off a little bit of this one and a little bit of that. And I like a little bit of obscene talk from my mouth. Amen? Dude, if you're a Christian, you cannot sit there and say, it's okay to curse. I was like, when people say that, it's like, show me in the Bible. I can show you in the Bible where it says, you know, put away, put off obscene talk from your mouth. Or in Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for edification, that it may impart grace for the hearers. Well, I don't know if this is a curse word. Well, is it imparting grace to the hearers? There you go. And if you're doing it, confess it before the Lord turn away from it and stop. I can't stop. You can stop. You can put it off. That's the key. It's, the Lord isn't going to tell us things that we can't do. And if we believe that we can't put them off, we're believing lies of Satan and the world and our flesh. We can put all these things off. And I don't know about you, but it is glorious freedom. Amen. It is glorious freedom. And we're, none of us are going to be perfect at it if I can just throw that out there too. But we can do it. Let's stop making excuses. No, look at verse 9. Do not lie to one another, saying that you have put off the old self. Again, notice, put off with its practices and put on the new. Notice here it says, do not lie to each other. It was funny, Talia came into our room, or my office the other day, and she was trying some new makeup things and new hair things, and Makai was sitting there, and she's all, how do you like it, huh? And I go, oh, wow. <laughs> and Makai's like, Dad, you... And then, you know, she's like, okay, well, I'll go, to, you know, I'm going to go change it or whatever. And, 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 and so she leaves and comes back a minute later, but in between, Makai's like, Dad, you, you can't say that. That's, I, I can't believe you did that, Dad. And I'm just like, what? What did I do? You know? 
And Talia comes back in and just says, honey, you need to understand that when your husband, when your dad and I first got married, we agreed that we would always be truthful to one another. Even how we look. You know, and it was a bad day when she finally got glasses and really saw how I looked, but that's another story, you know? Hey, that was laughing a little too much there now. <laughs> Extra time in purgatory. That's, I'm writing you up for that one. You know, it's funny. We, 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 we don't like the big sins. You know, let's, you know, let's, uh, no homosexuality in the church, no drunkard, no this, no that. But we'll lie to each other so readily, so easily. Hey, why weren't you at the prayer meeting last night? Oh, I, I was so busy, you know, just really crazy. And then the truth is, well, I was really tired, and I just, I just blew it. I stayed home. Stop lying. We need to put that off. Do you know that the Bible says in Revelation that it's liars are going to be outside the gate and be thrown into the lake of fire? You know, we see again such great sins like, you know, as these sexual sins and, and drug addicts and drunkardness and, you know, somebody comes in the door and they're homeless and they're smelly. Oh, 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 grody, dude, you know, <laughs> sit back here. No, we should take him, grab him by the arm or her and sit, come sit right up in the place of honor, dude. It doesn't matter. You see, because in our eyes, we need to come back to the Lord. We need to be putting off all these things, lying. How about Pride slander, gossip. Did you hear what Joe did? Slander, you know what's a good way to know what slander or gossip is? It's never putting something, lifting someone up. It's always tearing them down. And you know what? We shouldn't be doing it. And if you start, if you're listening to it, you're partaking of the sin. You are sinning in listening to it, in gossip or slander. And you know what you do? You just look at somebody and say, I don't want to hear that. No, just stop right now. Thanks. Yeah, that's gossip. And can let them be convicted. Well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Hurt their feelings. Don't, do, don't be mean about it. All right, you big, you big fat sinner. You know, no, just, dude, I'm not going to listen to it. I wanna, I'm not perfect, but I want to be holy for my Jesus. We need to put these things off. And notice, putting off the old self with its practices. But notice, we have to be so careful. We don't just put off. There are some churches, churches that all they focus on is the put-offs. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't say this. Don't do that, right? But there are other churches, and all they do is they focus on the put-ons. Make sure you put, do this. Do that. Do, instead of we need to be putting off as Christians, but we also need to be putting on. Because if we put off all these things, but we're not putting on the things of the Spirit, like our spiritual armor in Ephesians 6, or you know, what we're going to read right now, then you know what? our flesh is going to come in and fill that void. And it's going to turn into religiosity and legalism instead of the breath of the Spirit of God in our lives. Look at verse 10. And put on the new self. First of all, it's radical stuff. We can do a whole study just on, we have a new self. Amen? What? That's all that you get. Amen. <laughs> we have a new self. Amen? Amen. Amen. <sighs> What's a bummer as a pastor is when we can, we, we see truths like this and it's old hat. It's, amen. Instead of, oh, dude, I still remember the sinner I was. I was a buzzard. I still am sometimes, Lord, but you've given me a new self. We have the ability now to put on the new self. Isn't that radical? I always wanted to be Superman. I try up here, if you notice, I switch glasses from there to here so you won't recognize me when I come over to the pulpit. <laughs> it worked on Superman. I hope it works here. But, it, dude, we have a new self to put on. And, and again, we have to put off the old first. We have to put to death those things. But notice verse 10, and we have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Our new self is renewed, the Bible tells us, every day. Amen? Amen to that. Our new self. But again, notice that we have to choose to put it on. When we were living in sin and we were going to hell, we didn't have a choice to put it on. Now we have a choice. But even still, it's our choice as Christians. Some people have forgotten that it's our choice. Some people have forgotten that it's, it's our choice to take off and to put on Tonight, today, we need to be reminded. 
We need to remember that it is us by the power of the Spirit of God. Now notice what this, the result of this mind is. Notice what the result of putting on the new man, the new woman is. Look at verse 11. Here there is not Jew and Greek, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian and Scythian, slave free, but Christ is all and in all. Now, Stepping back, oh, well, that's okay, but, but check it out. Let's go a little deeper. Notice he says, here is not. First of all, gr- G- Greek and Jew. You know what he's saying there? No more racial pre- prejudice. That's what it's saying there. No more Greek and Jew. There was major racial prejudice in there. We live in a prejudiced world, don't we? By the way, it's not just whites who are prejudiced. Every single race is prejudiced against other races. It's part of our human sinful and fallen nature never to be and and that's not an excuse by the way it is sin it needs to be repented of but i tell you what if it ever comes into the church if you're sitting here this morning and you can't sit next to somebody who's of different nationality than you then there's a problem with your christianity and you got a problem with me by the way you don't like that i don't care because I'm going to stand upon the word of God. And this is to be a holy place for the Lord. And we need to understand there's no more Greek, no more Jew, no more racial partitions for the Christian. Another place we're told there's no more male, no more female. There's not to be sexism, but notice here it goes next. It says circumcised and uncircumcised. No more religious barriers. Well, I am a Jewish Christian. And I am a better Christian than you because I have my Jewish heritage. No, you're not. We're all in Christ. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, Steve. (laughs) Love you guys, though. Anybody else here that's a Jewish Jewish that's been completed? Because we're new creations in Christ. But also notice he says barbarian and Scythian. No more cultural walls. You know, it's radical. You know, we are so reserved here in America. Amen? Except when it goes to a football game or a hockey game or, you know, a, a concert. I, you know, and it drives me nuts if you couldn't tell. Sometimes I'm like, man, I should have been like, you know, in a, in just a real, you know, because I'm just, I get so excited. You know what I mean? It, it can be cultural, so we be quiet. Well, I can't, you know, I'm not going to do this. Dude, there's no more cultural walls. When you go down to Africa and you're celebrating with other Christians, culture doesn't matter. Well, you're an American. I, I'm sorry, I don't like your culture. I'm like, no, cultural walls are gone in Christ. Notice too, slave or free. Hey, you know what? No more social mores. You come to the church, you don't come as a rich man or rich woman. You don't come as a poor man or a poor woman. And again, that's what I love about Calvary chapels. You can come wearing a three-piece suit and I'm going to give you a hug and love you. You can come wearing sandals and shorts and I'm going to give you a hug and I'm going to love you for Jesus. It doesn't matter. You can be richer than anything and, and by God's grace, I'm not going to treat you any differently than going to treat somebody who's not rich or poor. And that's how it should be in the church. Why? Notice what he says. Because we have all been born of the Spirit of God, but Christ is all and in all. The Jesus in us is going to love the someone of a different race who has Jesus in them too. Does that make sense? The Jesus in us is going to love someone who is a Jewish believer or is not. The, Jew, the, the Jesus Christ in us is going to love someone. It doesn't matter what culture they're from. The Jesus in us is going to love the Jesus in them and if they're slave or free. Man, I've been to other countries and when you meet another true believer in Christ... It is radical, even if you can't speak the same language. I remember being on a, uh, as we're closing, I remember being on a missions trip in Russia. And it was in St. Petersburg. And we were out witnessing, and this one fellow came up and invited us over to meet his grandma, who was a Christian. He wasn't. And he invited us over, and, and when we came in the door, this little Russian lady, just what you picture, you know, short, plump, but she comes up to the door, and, you know, gray hair, and just is weeping. She's weeping. And we're like, why is she weeping? And the interpreter says, well, you know, after she talks, she's never had another Christian from another country inside her home. And she was greatly honored. And I started, we all started weeping. It was just, it was the Spirit of God that was meeting us there. 
Beloved in Christ, when we're putting off all these things, when we're putting off sensuality, when we're putting off, you know, the sexualness of our society, the perversion of our society, when we're putting off, you know, being angry and being bitter and we're, we're coming to the cross of Christ, it changes who we are and all of a sudden God can start to use us in all these different areas that he never used us before because Christ is in us. Christ is in us. And his spirit is power. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he's, he does, you know what I love the Lord, about the Lord? He loves us enough not to leave us where we're at. Amen? Amen? And I can tell you this after walking with Jesus for more than 30 years. I am still nowhere close to the man of God that I want to be until I'm home with my Jesus. Because I know daily, as I'm putting off and I'm crucifying the old, and I'm putting on, and I'm picking up my cross, denying myself and follow Christ, he is conforming me into the image of Jesus Christ, his son. Amen? Hey, if it's been too long since you've been changing, it's never too late. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, it's never too early, it's never too late. Do not put it off for tomorrow. Change today. If things need to be repented of, repent them, confess them to the Lord. Let the power of God change us this morning in radical ways. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're so blessed to be able to come here this morning, Lord, to study your word. Father, within this culture, I can't speak for everyone here, but Lord, it's easy to get dirty. It's easy to be soiled by the things of this world, Father. And I pray, Lord, that each one of us would spend time before you, Lord, confessing those areas that we've kind of hidden from you or we think we have, that we would confess them, Lord, repent of them, turn away, and walk in the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, putting off the old, putting on the new. Father, we continue to lift up those within our fellowship who are hurting, Lord, physically, that you would touch and heal and strengthen, Lord. Those emotionally, Father, that you would just bring your light of your grace, of your spirit into their lives, Lord. Even those who might not even know you this morning, that they would hear your voice, Lord, repent of their sins, and believe on you, Jesus, to be their Lord and Savior. Lord, we lift up the time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.